Hey you guys, um, it's kind of late and I have been Christmas shopping all day with my family um, and so I am just kind of doing a quick last minute video um, and like I said, Alyssa and I are still trying to work out um, what the best, I'm in my kitchen because we have really good light in here randomly, I had never thought about it, um, but Alyssa and I still haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do for all of our videos as far as having like a schedule or themes for Vlogmas. We're just kind of winging it. So I thought tonight that I would just do a um, just a quick like top 10 books I read in 2012. And I know like there's still three, three weeks left in the year. And so there I guess there's time for revision. So maybe at the end of the year I'll be filming this video again. But um, right now, and it's actually like top 17 books because I totally cheated because I'm terrible at picking like just 10 books that I really loved in the year but um also really terrible at holding my phone while I film usually I have it up in like a you know one of those things that holds your phone while you film tripod type thing but um not tonight I'm just winging it because I'm awesome Actually, I'm just really tired and I left my thing in the car. It's like a suction cup. I left it in my car and I was like, I'm not going outside because I don't have shoes on. That's where we're at right now, ladies and gentlemen. We're at the point where we don't put shoes on. And we just film videos without makeup, with our hair in ponytails, and with weird bangs in our pajamas. Totally in our pajamas. Anyway, top 10 books of 2012 plus 7 because that's awesome. Um... So, first I started with Out of Sight, Out of Time by Allie Carter, and that's the most recent book in her Galaga Girls series, and they're about um, teenage girls who are spies in training. It's kind of awesome and really, like, girl power, but also, um, I don't know, I just really like them. They seem like they would be fluffy or not so serious, but they always are really, um, they really explore friendships and dealing with complications in your life really realistically considering that like I said it takes place at a spy school and they're always having to do like secret missions in like the tiny town plus bonus points because it's set in Virginia which is always a plus for us because we're in Virginia um next I picked The Book of Blood and Shadow by Robin Wasserman and it's essentially like The Da Vinci Code if you guys read The Da Vinci Code and liked it um there's a group of bad guys and like a secret society and a mystery and dead bodies and history and just all of those things that are really fun especially like I said if you're any kind of like um a religion nerd and like you like to look into things about the origins of religions or the origin of sex like s-e-c-t-s is not not the other kind of sex um actually that's just a list I have that I can't say that word ever correctly but um it's really, I don't know, it's it's really good. It was one of those books that I was not expecting to like as much as I did. Like, I really wanted to like it. I like Robin Wasserman a lot. I really enjoyed The Da Vinci Code. And when I first started it, I was just kind of like, this is kind of blah. And then the longer I read it and the more I read, it just got better and better. And I really enjoyed it. And so I put it on my top ten list of 17. Um, next I picked Bumped and Thumped by Megan McCafferty. And they, um, it's a duology. And I can't remember if I read Bumped this year or if I read Bumped at the very end of the year last year. But I know, either way, I reread it when Thumped came out. Um, just because I wanted it to be really fresh. It um, is a dystopian. But it's one of those that, like, I really didn't even pick up on the fact that it was dystopian fiction until I got to the end of the first novel. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. Megan McCafferty, did you just, like slip me dystopia in this thing as well as like a treatise on society and the way we value human beings because you are good if that is the case and that's exactly kind of what happened um they live in a society where you go like barren when you hit 18 and you can no longer have children so um it's this really big honor for kids even as young as like 13 to be having babies and they have babies and then they sell them to people who are older and it's just like they're perpetuating this thing and it's illegal to use any kind of birth control and if you contract out to have a baby like if you are like really pretty and really smart um you're kind of like as a child you're just kind of engineered to be like this baby making machine and if you like just they like if you just get pregnant from like your boyfriend or a really good friend then you have to kind of just like auction your kid off 
but if you um, are cultivated and you're contracted and they buy you to have your kid, then like you can get millions and millions of dollars for it. So it's kind of like really messed up and like I said, like there's this whole culture built around like having children and the idea of having children and um, the value that we place on youth kind of, I don't know, it's really complicated to explain and make it sound good, but they were both, like, it was a really enjoyable story, and I was intrigued from the get-go, even though um, there's a whole slang language that McCafferty creates as part of her story. Um, even with all of that, I was still really, really impressed with the story, and I was really interested, and then, like I said, I got to the end of Bumped and was just kind of like, hold up, wait just a second. It's kind of just like a surprise thing that, like, after you finish reading it, you're thinking about the things that you place a value on, um, like, things like appearance and what makes you worthwhile as a human being. You know, in this society, it's the ability to have children. It's the ability to have, like, genetically superior children. And then, like, in our society, a lot of times, um, importance is placed on wealth or physical beauty, physical attractiveness, as opposed to a lot of other things that can be considered a lot more important than the shape of your face or how much money you have. Anyway, enough on that tangent. Um, next I picked Shadow and, Boo Shadow and Bone by Lee Bard Bardugo. Probably butchering all these names. But um, it was a fairy tale, but not a fairy tale retelling. It was an original fairy tale set in a very Russian type um, setting, and it was just fantastic, and of course, it's the first in a series, or the first in a trilogy, um, and it kills me, because it was so, so good, and it was one of those books that, I don't know, I, I heard so much hype about it, and the cover's so, so pretty, and then I read it, and I was just as happy with it after reading it as I was, um, it totally lived up to my hype, um, Next, I picked Everybody Sees the Ants by A.S. King, which I reviewed earlier and don't need to say a lot about. If um, you've watched that review, you know I really like that book. And it was one um deals with bullying to an extent, but also like psychosis. And I enjoyed that a lot, a lot. Next is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. Let me just tell you about Daughter of Smoke and Bone. It really frustrates me, and actually the sequel's out now, but last time I was in the bookstore, I peeked at the very end of it. And it doesn't say the end. It says to be continued. So I'm kind of debating whether or not I want to read the sequel, which is Days of Blood and Starlight. They have awesome names. But um, Daughter of Smoke and Bone is one that I had had for a year, I, almost, when I read it. Um, several, several months. like, And I read it in September because the new book was coming out in November and I wanted to have read it and had time to process and when I got to the end I was so angry that I was going to have to wait another two months to read the sequel and I wish that I had just not read it at all because it was just so so good. Um, it's set in Prague and there's this battle between um, angels and there's a word and I can't think of it because like I said it's it's almost 9 o'clock. I've been awake for way too many hours now. But, um, you know, the main character is being raised by Chimera. That's the word. Chimera, Chimera, whichever word. She's being raised by these Chimeras, and she lives in Prague and goes to art school. And then she comes home one day, and there's a handprint, and she has to figure out um, what happened, and she meets this boy, and there's kind of some insta-love, but it's explained really well, so I let it go, and it's just, it's a story that I was intrigued with from the very first page, and I really enjoyed to the very last page, and I enjoyed it so much that I don't want to read the sequel, because I don't want to have to wait for the last book, so I'm seriously considering just not reading it at all, until, like I said, until the last book's published, because I'm impatient, and I don't like to wait for things. Next is Small Town Sinners by Melissa Walker, and this one's kind of different take, and I read it, um, I read it at the very beginning of the year, I think, so I don't have a lot of details, but, um, I wrote, after I read it, I keep kind of like a reading journal kind of thing, and I text our friend Katie a lot, because we read the same books and, um, everything, and I remember texting her and telling her that Small Town Sinners said everything that I wanted a book about Christianity in a small southern town to say, 
um, it addressed a lot of issues that are difficult for, um, I feel like teens growing up that are making those choices, um, to deal with when they're, it, like any religion, I feel like there comes a time where you question your belief system, or if you don't have a belief system, if you should have some sort of belief in some sort of God type figure. And it dealt with that questioning in a really respectful way because it focuses on these things called hell houses, which are kind of like haunted houses, except they deal with things that are considered sins, um, like big time sins in most small town conservative churches. And the main character goes through this whole crisis of faith and this evolution. And when the book ends, she still has a lot of questions, which I appreciate because I don't feel like at 16 you have anything figured out. And I don't feel like you have any real answers as far as what is going on in the world and with life. So, um, I feel like it's a really, really fantastic, um, just, it's good. It's a, it's a fantastic book about faith in general. And it's also just a really well-written book that's really respectful. Um, it's, it's just really good. Um, next I put down the evolution of Mara Dyer, but with that has to come the unbecoming of Mara Dyer, um, by Michelle Hodkin. And I read Mara Dyer 1 last year when it came out, and it was phenomenal, and it deals with, um, it's kind of like that movie Identity, kind of in a way. Um, and it's of the fact that Mara has suffered a huge trauma and has post-traumatic stress disorder, but she also thinks that she can, like, do things like parapsychology, which I'm a little fascinated with, and it's a really good story, and like when I finished it, I was so angry when I finished Evolution of Mara Dyer, I was so very mad that I had to wait another year for the book to come out. This is a theme. I don't know why I read books in a series until they're all out, because I just get really, really angry that they're not all available. Um, and again, my friend Katie, I, sent, I took my copies to her and was like, here you go. And she read them um, over Thanksgiving break and texted me and was like, Michelle Hodkin is evil incarnate. And I was like, yeah, I know, because this book is fantastic. Um, really great storytelling. Mara is a character that you don't always like, but you always want to like. Um, I'm off, I found myself pulling for her the whole time. So if you like any sort of like psychological type mysteries, I think this is like the ideal book for you. Next, um, almost by default, is The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. If I read a book by John Green during the year, it's generally the best book that I've read. And I actually, um, on this book, unless it was a, the a first book in a series, I didn't count any book that I had reread. Um, I reread several books this year and loved them and gave them five-star ratings um, on Goodreads, just like I had the first time I read them. But, um, so... These are all books that I've read for the first time this year. Like I said, unless I was rereading because the sequel came out. But The Fault in Our Stars follows Hazel and Augustus, who are two teens with cancer. So it automatically just sounds terrible. But if you've read anything by John Green, or you follow him on Twitter, or you've watched his Vlogbrothers videos, you know that he is really good at pairing really serious subject matter with lighthearted, funny bits. And even though I couldn't read this book in public because I... <laughs> Um, cried hysterically while I was reading it at the at parts. Um, I also laughed out loud and was just really impressed by the story writing. And as always, like his characters are so fantastic. Um, I would I actually um, had a conversation with my friend Katie again, and also I think with Alyssa. And I said to them in the movie Sleepless in Seattle, there's a scene between Rosie O'Donnell and Meg Ryan where. Rosie O'Donnell says to Meg Ryan, like, you don't want to be in love. You want to be in love in a movie, which is one of the best movie lines ever, I think, because they're in a movie and she's in love with Tom Hanks' character. But I sent them both messages and was like, you know how this happens in Sleepless in Seattle? And I'm like, I'm similar. Like, I don't want to just be in love. Like, I want to be in love in a John Green novel because I just love all of his main characters. They're fantastic and I want to be their best friend and I want to be their girlfriend and I want to be their siblings and I like whatever there is that you can be. Like I want to be their parent. I want to be everything because I, I love his characters and they're fantastic. However, this year TVO's was not my number one favorite book of the year. The best book I read this year was Endangered by Elliot Schreifer and I've written a review that I want to film but it's still hard for me to put into words um, how fantastic Endangered was. Um, essentially, I cried like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows cried. And if any of you are book nerds and are Harry Potter fans, 
then you will understand like what that means. Uh, pretty much from page 16 till the end of Deathly Hallows, I sobbed uncontrollably. Um, at times I have, to, I have to put the book down and cry and cry and cry and then pick the book back up and read through my tears once they had subsided. And Endangered was kind of like that. But it was a really powerful story and it wasn't sad. It was just... It was so moving. And I feel like it has the potential to change the worldview of other people. Really like really change that worldview. Um, I'm already really conscious of things that are going on in Africa where this is set in the, Con the Congo. Um, I'm really aware of the civil rights struggles over there. I'm, I'm really passionate about doing something in my lifetime to try to change that. Um, I'm just trying to figure out like how to do that with my limited resources and the fact that um, most of my family's here and I feel like if I ever go to Africa, I will never come home again. Which would be sad for me and my family. But um, when I finished reading this book, I wanted to just move to the Congo. And I wanted to adopt bonobos and take care of them and save them. And help the people there in the same way. So, um, like I said, I have a review that I'm prepared for you guys. And maybe after Christmas, or maybe even during Guagmas, I will get my thoughts together enough to really do a review that I feel like will do it justice. I haven't managed yet. But, um... If I could only recommend one book that I've read this year, it would be Endangered. However, I have a couple of um, honorable mentions. Those were my top ten slash more than ten. But I also read the last two books in Holly Black's Curse Worker series this year, um, which is White Cat, Red Glove, and Black Heart. I always get the like colors and objects interposed, but... Curse Worker series, and they're just really good. Um, she did a great job of world building because her world is both fantastical and the fact that there are like magical workers that kind of remind me of like old school Eastern European gypsies that like kind of like Esmeralda y gypsies, but it's set in like modern time, which I feel like is really complicated to do with world building. And I was really impressed with that. Not to mention the storyline and Castle is super dreamy. And it's just, it was really good. Um, fantastic series. If you like any kind of urban fantasy or magical stuff. There's some boarding school, family drama. It's kind of got everything you want in a series. And then, of course, I also read The Diviners by Libba Bray and did a review of it. And it was really good. 1920s. A little bit of magic, like prohibition, speakeasies, flappers, murder, demon possession. Again, everything you need in a novel. It was really good. And then my last honorable mention is The Unnaturalist by Tiffany Trent, who is a little more unknown, but she is a local author. She actually only lives about an hour away from us, um, from me, um, and about like 30 minutes from where Alyssa lives, kind of, in the New River Valley, and it's a steampunk book. It was just really good. Um, I was happy to see it. She had a series come out earlier that didn't make, um, it didn't get, all of them didn't get published, and I've been a huge fan for a lot of years, but I absolutely love The Unnaturalist, and I'm really excited to reread it next year, um, when the next book comes out. So this is a really long video, because I've rambled a lot, I blame being tired, but hopefully um, you watched all of it. If you did, then you get five cool points. Um, if you didn't, then it doesn't matter because you didn't see this part. Hopefully Alyssa will have a video for you guys later and tomorrow. And I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.